Chin up 11, still time 11. Still time to have a good game, son. Unlucky. Oh! Referee! Referee! What's he doing? Ref! What type of club are you? What type of club are you? Cheers, mate. I know you've seen it, and that's all right. What type of club are you, though? Come on, Rangers. Come on, Rangers. He missed the whole game. Charwood are returning home after four consecutive away fixtures that brought the club just four points from a possible 12. They may still sit atop the Mid-Sussex Premier League, but their title rivals Forest Row are about to catch them up. So the pressure is on now that they're back at the Wolf's Den, where they face Sporting Linfield, the side that they beat 3-0 at the start of the last episode of Charwood Uncovered. With a strong squad to choose from, and no need to call up any bodies from the Vets team, Charwood are looking to kickstart the second half of their season. Unfortunately for Barks and Mike, morale in the dressing room seems to be pretty good. All right, boys. Won't talk for too long. Teams up there, as you've seen, Zacho in goal, Davian at right back, Dino alongside Wardy, Lippitt on the left, Merce pushing up a bit higher at right side, Herds and Tomo in there, Jamie on the left, Payne in the hole, behind Lockie. We've all kind of reviewed and reflected on last week. We know what we've got to do, and for me, Back to basics, the work rate, the togetherness, the fighting to keep a clean sheet and that kind of pack mentality. We call ourselves the wolf pack. Well, last week we weren't. We were turning on each other. We weren't the pack that we created and the spirit we had. We must keep that. We have conceded, and this is all of us, some bad goals, boys, over the last few weeks. That's all of us. We defend as a team. And it's something we've neglected a little bit. That getting back into that 4-5-1 shape, that squeezing and pressing, that's why we worked on it at training. We are not going to concede sloppy poor goal. If they score a world in, play for us, fair play, I'll stand there and clap them. But we're not going to allow them to score goals from areas that we should be able to stop and prevent. Agreed? Yeah. Well, stage one. We miss, unlucky, go again. That's our mindset today. What's next? Go again. What's next? Go again. Not focusing on what's been and done and having a dig at someone. If there is any moaning and digging, coming straight off. Because that's enough of it now. That really is enough. Some people we can't say anything to, toys come out the pram. We're mates, they're the enemy. Last week, we were all hurting. And I was hurting up until Wednesday because of that. And we take it out on them today. Right? Yeah. Let's have it. On, Together, boys. Together. I mean, it, that was embarrassing last week. And I don't say that to demean the opposition. Like I said, fair play to them. But to concede five second half goals is like, I mean, that was a capitulation I've never experienced. Well, maybe the season before we had, we had a similar result. But that was like, and I'm left scratching my head then going like, what, what can I do to stop this? You can just feel the momentum going against you. How different is it talking to this lot than it is talking to a class full of students? Yeah, really different. Really different. I think it's the feeling of these are men. I have to have a bit of a, more of assertiveness and aggression, whereas the kids, the kids respect you, most of them, automatically because you're a teacher, because you're an adult, because you've, you've been at the school and you've got a good reputation. Well, some of these lads have only known me a few months, and in this environment, they could stand up and fight me, couldn't they? They could stand up and answer back and square up to me. So it's... You, you're aware they're men, you're aware there's some anger in the room, you're aware there's some disappointment. But I guess I'm harsher with these boys than I am with kids. Well, I am, definitely. I say to these boys when it's not good enough. Or as a kid, I, I'm a lot more positive and I praise a lot more, I think. We know we're not just going to, someone's not going to walk out. We know we're in it together. That's why I try and address, like today, as a general, as a general comment, even though lads are probably thinking, we know that's about. But you have to keep the respect to the ones that want you to say it. Like, there's lads in here going, I've had enough of that kid there, I've had enough of that, I need the gaffer to step in now. Yeah. So it's awkward. But what they don't know is, oh, some of these I need. We've got to, we've got to get a, a run going again. Otherwise, people start questioning the process a little bit, the training, what we're doing. When you're winning, people believe in you, right? When you're losing, it's like, does he know what he's talking about? 
One man who does seem to know what he's talking about is the softly spoken manager of Sporting Linfield, Luke Hancock. We collared him for a quick chat. How long have you been playing for him? I've been playing for them for about eight years now. Eight years? Eight, eight seasons, I says, yeah, absolutely. In years gone by, injuries, um, yeah, knocked me out for the whole season, played by the first game of the season. But since really, the, what kind of injury? Um, herniated a disc in my spine. Ooh. Yeah, yeah um, we've um, had a couple of good results um, in the last three games. Um, we weren't great, we weren't at the races last week. Um, it's a good feeling about the team today, though. Pretty strong, so um, yeah, I, I feel like we can hopefully provide a bit of an upset. you got a full squad? Yeah, as full as it can be. You've played Charlwood quite recently, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think we um, fell short, they took the three points there, but I think it was a very tight game for the vast majority. Uh, maybe a bit of fitness, um, a bit of organisation probably kept them going towards the end. How much do you think about the weekend and the football that's coming up? Constantly, <laughs> from Monday through Monday morning through to Friday afternoon. Really? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Going to check pictures, making sure the players are uh, in good order, making sure all the equipment's about. Yeah, pr- pretty relentless. I've tried to take a bit more of a back step this season, um, but being um, grassroots football, it needs people like me and a few of the other guys to keep it all together. Yeah. Right, boys. Me and Barks had a long chat on Saturday about whether or not really we got the for this in terms of winning the, winning the championship and whether or not we could respond. Because we put things in groups, you know, about winners got to be it and how hard you get it and how hard you respond and everything. But actually, they're just words. And actually, it's about our actions. And all week, me and Barks have been talking about how fantastic the response has been from the last couple of weeks, especially this week and the attendances at training and so on. But it don't mean anything unless we go out there and now start our season again. It is the start of our new season. We've had that nine points gap. The gap's gone. Forest Road, if they win their games, they're with us. We've now got to kick on and win our season. And that means being relentless and ruthless against these. I believe in us. I believe we've got the players here. I say it every week. No one is better than us in this league when we turn up and we do the things that we do well and not get involved in those. We go out, we be professional, we get the job done. All right? Good luck today, boys. Cheers. Let's go, in, boys. Oh, nice. Charlwood's opening is incredibly promising. Within five minutes, they've seen multiple chances flash across the Sporting Linfield goal. Oh, Jesus Christ. Let's start testing the keeper now. Obvious thing to say. For some time, Barks has been trying to get his players to adopt a throw-in routine he once saw used in the Premier League. Yet despite its simplicity, his side never get it quite right. Jesus, lip it. Payne's doing it every time. Payne's got to go and tell the other person, whoever the other one is. Because she, he's doing it, but not always sure who the other person is. Yeah, but that was just a terrible throw. Charwood are very much in charge in the early stages and shooting on sight. But Ben Herbman couldn't possibly have predicted the drama that would follow his narrow miss. Oh. Unlucky Ben! Is that car? Yeah. Oh, they're just getting out of it. Oddly, it's the goalkeeper that seems to take most of the woman's ire. Who knew that parking behind a goal of an amateur football match would be such a bad idea? Keeper, that's your fault! <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh, Christ. Eh, yeah, close enough. Baby to me! Baby to me! Baby to me! Keep coming! Keep coming! Drive! Drive, Dino! Options! Alright, alright, Dino, well done! Throughout the game, Charles have more corners than a dodecahedron, but Sporting Linfield do a rather good job of fending them off. Tom Tennant's first effort is deflected wide, and his second is cleared off the line. But it's Tennant who then wins the ball back in midfield, before unleashing the lively Jamie Liddell. Brilliant, Tomo! Finish, Jay! All right, Jay! It's early in the game, but already Jamie is proving to be more frustrated than a blind man in a no-touching strip club. Boys, we've got to take these up! Oh, I just don't get it. They're, they're trying to score. The away side just can't get out of their own half. Brilliant hands! It's been unreal, son. Options, options! Talk to him! What about Aaron? Time, Aaron! Man on, man on, man on! Work it, work it, work it! Time! 
Well, that was perfect. With 20 minutes played, Chuttle appeared to have taken the lead via an unfortunate own goal. It's an own goal! Ref! Ref! Talk to him! Ref! Don't ask him! It's an own goal! However, a controversial offside flag keeps the score goalless. Ref! Come on now! Peace his hands! No foul, no foul, no foul, no foul! Well done! Play David, play David! What's he doing? That's twice! Walk away, walk away, walk away, walk away, walk away. That's twice he's raised his hand, the 11, twice! An alleged wave of the elbow from Linfield's number 11 wasn't spotted by the referee or the cameras, but it certainly riled the Charlwood bench. He swung his hand twice over here. Davey, don't get involved. He wants to do that, he can go for that in a minute. He's having a stinker bed, he's lashing out. 15 minutes in and a Linfield player goes down injured and his teammates scream for the home side to put the ball out. It's up to the ref! Oh, put it out, Merce. But when the away side aren't too generous with their return of possession, it's yet more fuel in the fire for the row with the number 11. This guy here, Rev, he's having a bad day, fella. You are right, 11? You get out of bed the wrong side. You get out of bed the wrong side. Over on the other side of the pitch, an informed Jamie Liddell latches onto Ben Herbin's lob. Responsibility. Get in. Yes! A brave block on the line and a desperate attempt to stop Kevlock's rebound are both in vain. Jamie, well played, son! Oh, the mindset, though! Some of us can still raise it! Well done! Sporting Linfield's response is to push up the pitch. But the effort is not only futile, it also creates space for Charwood to exploit. It's in Merce! First class, well done. Aaron Murphy's flicked effort from the edge of the box somehow deceives the keeper and Chow will go two up. Mindset, we go again! Warning, Dean, I love it! I love it! Hungry to get on the score sheet, Jake Milladell then tries his luck from range. Unlucky Joe on Tomo! No, not him. It takes 40 minutes for the away side to create a chance. Tom Shambrick has his shot saved to Haya like by the foot of Zach, but is only rewarded with a goal kick. Yeah, save that. Well done, Murphs. Cut that line to me. Well done, Aaron. Great goal. Yes! Murphy! Quality son! Brilliant, Aaron! Stevie, great ball! Jamie! Superb half, mate! Well done! Three minutes before half-time, Jamie gets a deserved goal to give Child a three-goal lead going into the break. Yeah, I mean, we've been here before, though, haven't we, boys? This is my concern now. We've been here before. We were tuned up last game. We were winning at Ringma, and we take our foot off. All right, we take our foot off. We cannot do it here, boys, because I I'll, I'll, won't sleep for a month. We cannot. We cannot. <laughs> You have been superb from the minute the whistle's gone. You've popped it around. We've moved the ball. You, that's us there. Everyone that's come watch gone, they're back. They're back. You're all back because we're doing the basics. But we can't stop that this half. We can't go out there and go, it's 3-0. Let's now start all trying to score. Those basics, they don't look like scoring because we've got a line, because people are fighting on the wings. People are getting back beside the ball. Everyone's fighting. And the defence can actually concentrate on what they're doing. And they're not firefighting problems now. Do not go out there, start popping it around over play. Hit areas, squeeze spaces. We do not concede this afternoon, lads. Whatever you have to do, take someone down, smash someone. We do not concede. And then we earn the right to play. Three points, boys. It's got to be ours today. Come on. Come on, boys. <laughs> I couldn't get out full stop. We do not concede. Playing this side. Playing this side. No turn! No turn, Dean! Well done! Child keep up the momentum, and within minutes, Aaron Murphy has a chance to shoot from 18 yards. Unlucky! Unlucky! 
brilliant job with this half. Keep the energy. Liddell is relentless on the left-hand side, leaving the defenders in his wake as he bounds forwards. The opening gives Aaron Murphy a chance for a deserved hat-trick. Oh, wow! Safe keep up! The influential Irishman is denied by an excellent save. Up to this half, been better. With so many players in fine form, Barks and Mike struggle to decide who should come off in order to give the subs a run out. Do Wardy, push Hurts back and get Mike on, and then in a couple of minutes we'll do Bailey for Kev. Yeah? Bailey, we'll do these two. We're going to go put you straight on up top for Kev in about, to give him another five minutes to try and get, try and get something. Is that all right? Just going to go straight on the right, right wing in front of Murphs, push Murphs back, all right? Listen. You'll have to communicate to Murphs that he's going to play behind you because we won't shout it over from here, but you go and tell him when yeah. you go on. Nothing to lose here, 4 0 up. Get out of him, show, you, show your ability today. All right, let's get on the score sheet. Mike's going to go in the middle of the park, all right? I think he's just done it half of the dude. Yeah, I know. <laughs> How is that king? With an hour played, Jamie finally gets a one-on-one. -on -one. With a flick of the foot, he leaves the goalkeeper on his backside and slots the ball wide. Do you know what? Not one person's going there. Lucky, well played, son. Davy, well played, son. And Payne, well played, son. Straight off the bench, confidence player Justin has a chance to make it five. Oh, just! But his rusty right foot slots the ball wide. Be clinical. Yes! Great ball, Woody! Jamie's pinpoint cross lands on the head of Matt Ward, and Child have their fifth. Brilliant, Ward! He deserve that, son. Let's keep fighting, let's keep our tempo and energy, come on! A rare mistake from Dean very nearly lets Sporting Linfield in to ruin Zach's clean sheet. Well done, Dean! On. And with a questionable tackle, Dean redeems himself. <laughs> it goes! It goes! He's in, he's in! Go, 2v2! 2v2! Bailey. Go on, Bailey. Unlucky. Unlucky. Dino will recover, son! With time ebbing away, Barks renews his verbal spats with the Linfield winger. The consequences prove disastrous. Clean up 11, still time 11. Still time to have a good game, son. Unlucky. Unlucky. Oh! oh Ray! 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 That's on camera, that's on camera, Ref. Just punched me in the stomach. Ref, he's just done it all game, just punched me in the stomach. That's right. What type of cover you Ref, Ref, I'm going to go to the police for that one, it's on camera. You get it on camera, Phil. We still remain neutral. It's all right, it's going to the police, it's fine. Tom Shambrook, we just need your date of birth, mate. <laughs> it's a distasteful end to a rousing victory. And to the surprise of nobody who has seen the show before, Barks is not going to let it go. I'm not being punched on that on the sideline. I'm not, honestly. No, I know, but he's thrown his arms all game, you're 11. Cheers, mate, thank you. You're right, though. You're sure you're right. It's on camera, mate. Don't yeah. worry about it. <laughs> Gaffer, well done, mate. I'm not being punched like that, though, mate, on the sideline. Like. It's there. Well, it's there. You'll see it, and I'll send it to you. I'll send it to the club. I'm not being punched like that, ref, on the sideline. Rather oddly, a woman with little grasp on the laws of filming in public spaces picks an argument You're with Mike. You him in the stomach when he ran off the pitch. Accidentally? No, I punched him in the stomach. We've got it on camera. Oh, good. Yeah. 
But before you do anything with that camera, get it through me. Because Sorry? you need my permission. Not if it's an assault. No. Any filming you do, yeah. you've got, if you're using it's anything... Not off, it's not off, not off, not nothing to do with our crowd. You don't have to put your finger in my face. You don't have to put your finger in my face. Just play, you just asked me what happened. You just what happened. You just asked me what happened. I only told you what happened. Yeah, boys, did everything we asked. We died for that clean sheet. Enjoy this. Enjoy these results. Enjoy these victories. We've had a bad run of form. You've turned it round today. Now we go again. No one catches us. We keep that fight. We keep that desire. Get in there! I'm willing to let the punch slide. Barks introduces a song about his ribs. Na, 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 na. See my ribs. See my ribs. Oh, yeah. see my ribs. Sadly, we don't have the rights to continue playing it. Yeah. Proof. Proof is this. All week they've reacted really well, they've re reflected on last week and they were honest in their reflection of the game, I think, with the feedback. Training was the best we've had all year. They worked hard, we had good attendance. Today, energy was here, the warm up. And we've all had to take a look at ourselves and go, what do we really want to do? But I agree, the boys this week have been great in terms of what they've, what they've been texting you, what they've reflected. They've all turned up at training. Really easy to go, it's freezing cold on a Wednesday night at eight o'clock, I ain't bothering. For me, the frustration is we, we can't, go much higher because of the, the facilities and the, um, the, the floodlights and things. So I think we could have one more draw, maybe two more draws and one more defeat would be our, to win it now, we've only got, we should not really be thinking like this, but we've probably got one defeat left in us. <laughs> I've been absolutely physically assaulted, Michael. Can you believe it? I'm gonna call 999 as soon as this is done. I'm surprised it ain't happened sooner. <laughs> Thanks everybody for supporting Bunch of Amateurs. You can get more stuff from us on Patreon. Check out the link in the description.